Yeah. Awesome. Oh, oh no. Oh. So yeah, I just completely fell off the trampoline. So you can't do any jumping then? Not really, but I'm sure everything will be okay. Whilst I fight off the barbarians, let's go over the rules for the run. First and foremost, no jumping. Now my character's feet are allowed to leave the ground, but as long as I don't press the jump button, it's okay. And the final rule is no juggling. Because you can actually start a juggle without having to jump, but that would just kind of ruin the entire run. So with the first wave of barbarians defeated, let's go get a weapon and pet. So our first pet is going to be Giraffe, is he will give us an XP bonus. We are going to need to be level 8 for Thieves Forest, so this is essential for levelling up. For our weapon, we're going to choose the Lollipop, as it gives us a plus 5 to agility. We want as little damage as possible to maximise our XP gains. And the plus 5 agility is nice for the extra movement speed. So soon enough, we make it to the War Machine, which is our first boss of the run. This boss serves as a great tutorial to the combat in Castle Crashers. So with very little damage, it's still not difficult. And I was prioritizing getting as many hits as I could so I could maximize my XP gains. And soon enough, the first boss was down. Moving to the second boss of the run, we once again were doing very little damage, but we're getting quite a bit of XP. All we had to do here was avoid the barbarian boss's attacks, as well as the smaller barbarians that spawned in. And without much difficulty, the barbarian boss fell and we could save the princess. Except the princess is high up and we can't jump. I tried everything I could think of in order to save the princess, but at this point in the game, we just couldn't do it. So we had to leave the princess behind and move on. I'm sure she'll be okay. So at this point, we were only level 5 and we needed to get to level 8 before the Thieves Forest. So I went back into the Barian War and played through it again. I played through it until I hit level 8 before backing out. I once again returned to the pet nursery where I picked up the best pet for this challenge. We also grabbed the blacksmith's hammer which will give us a plus 3 to strength. So with our upgrades, we could finally move into the thieves forest. So we needed to be level 8 so we could unlock a certain melee combo. Doing this combo will allow your character to slightly lift off the ground. And this is exactly what we needed to get past the required jump in the thieves forest. So by activating this combo, we can get just enough height to grab onto the ledge and pull ourselves up. I sure do hope there are no other sections of the game that require you to jump. The next boss is the Troll Mother and this could be awkward. With so many enemies, not being able to jump or juggle could make this boss extremely difficult. At the start of the fight, I wanted to get as much damage as I could on the Troll Mother before she started spawning in loads of enemies. I managed to get her health down to about half until it got too much. From here on out, I wanted to always be on the move so I couldn't get caught in the enemies. So I ended up running around the arena doing my dive attack. This allowed me to get some decent damage on the boss and also knock back the enemies. And after doing this for a little bit, the troll mother was defeated. Next was the mill chase scene and I had completely forgotten about the logs that you have to jump over. Failing to jump over them will result in you taking some damage. So I ended up having to just tank the damage. This led us into the river where we had another big problem. In the river, you cannot do any attacks whilst in the water. Normally, you would jump out the water to do damage or jump on some floating debris, but we can't do that. So we had to figure out a way to do damage or get on one of these floating debris without pressing the jump button. We tried using the rocks to knock us onto the debris. We tried using the fish to knock us on the debris. We tried using different animal orbs to see if they could damage the enemies for us, but just nothing seemed to work. I had pretty much given up. Is it actually impossible to beat Castle Crashers without jumping? For a moment, it did seem like it. But that's when this happened. Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You can do it without jumping. So you spawn into the level mid-air as you're falling. And for the brief moment whilst you're falling, you can use the fly combo to keep yourself in the air. 
I was then able to position myself over some floating debris and drop onto it. So all I had to do now was not take any damage or get knocked off. And there were many things that wanted to knock me off this debris. But with some patience, we were finally able to make it to the catfish boss fight. And this boss fight is pretty easy. Almost every single attack can be blocked, so as long as you hold up your shield, you can't really be knocked off. All we had to do was avoid the catfish as he's swimming towards us, and after a while, the catfish was defeated. In the tall grass fields, our next boss fight was the bear. The only thing we had to look out for was Rami and the tornado. Not being able to jump meant avoiding these attacks was a little bit harder, but overall, the bear boss isn't a difficult fight and we quickly moved on to PP Shredder's cave. In the cave, we can find cave slimes. These enemies are extremely annoying, as they have a loss of health and move away whenever you damage them. In my last challenge run video, I had a lot of people commenting that I was fighting them incorrectly. The most effective way to damage the slimes is by doing a dive attack. So this time, I made sure to do it. Please don't shout at me. But this eventually led us on to PP Strello, and well, we all know how this boss goes. We were now level 10, meaning we could upgrade our weapon to the clunky mace. This weapon will give us a plus five to our strength, so a little bit better than the blacksmith's hammer. We soon moved on to the flowery fields, where I fought my own kind. But it's okay, I'm more of a peanut butter guy. And up on the wedding walls, I actually let the Grey Knights do something for once. And they actually managed to defeat the beefy conehead. Maybe these guys will finally be useful. And inside Wedding Crash, we fought my favourite enemies, the Traffic Cone. But this eventually led us to the groom, where I'm sure it'll be a fair fight. Uh... So round two with a cone head, and it honestly just feels like who could get their hit first. If you melee the groom first, you can keep him stun locked. If he hits you first, well... So making sure I struck first, it wasn't too bad as we could just keep the groom in a stun lock. Next was the carriage chase scene and this actually posed an interesting challenge. Normally, you would just jump and hit the giant troll. You were able to stay floating in the air, doing infinite damage and avoiding all attacks. But of course, we couldn't do this. I instead had to use my projectile magic to damage the giant troll. This would have been easy if it wasn't for the constant thieves spawning. The thieves would either shoot an arrow at me, melee me, or just get in the way. And if you didn't do damage to the giant troll, he will shoot a giant laser beam at you. This made the fight way more annoying than it needed to be, as I had to make sure I was damaging the troll whilst avoiding the thieves. And with each bee doing only 11 damage, it took quite a bit. But after being knocked off the carriage, we could enter our second cave. Which means more, more cave signs. I think the only thing that could make this worse is Coneheads. Why do I play this game? Why? Surely the worst of it is over. Next was the Cyclops boss fight and this is a pretty easy one. The damage windows are quite large and it's very predictable. So all I had to do was dodge in and out of attacks, getting in my damage where I can and of course blocking the throwing knives. Hey, uh, it says Gurubun under the lava. And this time for the second princess, we could actually save her. I'm sure the red princess made her way out. Next was Lava World, and the only real issue here were the fireballs that the fire demons threw. But apart from that, it wasn't too bad getting through here without jumping. But that can't be said for the skeletons, as for some reason, they all just ganged up on me. So on my second attempt, like the troll mother boss fight, I made sure to always stay on the move, doing my dive attack for damage. As long as I didn't stay still, the enemies couldn't do much. So one by one, I defeated them and moved on to the first boss of Lava World. The volcano boss fight requires you 
to be B fit in order to do damage. And as long as you are damaging the boss, it can't attack you. So the only real issue were the two fire demons. But I simply just went side to side of the volcano, doing damage when beefy until the first boss was down. Next was the dragon boss fight, which was quite an interesting fight. The dragon's head is quite high from the ground, meaning we can't do damage without jumping. Even my uppercut couldn't reach the dragon. So what I ended up doing was using the beekeeper's splash magic while stood underneath the dragon head. I was able to get short bursts of damage in, but I had to also avoid the dragon's fire as well as the boulder. And there was this very annoying fire demon who would constantly spawn. So after a lot of dead bees, the dragon boss was defeated. Next was industrial castle and going through this without jumping was kind of rough. The elevator has a lot of enemies and normally I would just get them in one big juggle. But without being able to juggle, I ended up getting a lot of bombs thrown at me. But after the elevator, we did have to go against the brute who is always a problem in these kind of runs. But I came prepared. Using the bombs I bought from the item shop, I was able to place them as the brute was running into me. And since it was normal mode, the brute actually died extremely fast. So all that was left is the industrial machine. With this boss fight, there are seven parts that you have to destroy. The five pillars in the middle, the turret, and the fingers. I always begin by destroying the five pillars in the middle, leaving only the turret and fingers left. I then use my uppercut attack since it has really good range. Although looking back at this footage, I'm not sure why I didn't just use my throwable magic. But anyway, the industrial machine was defeated and my chat decided the industrial prince's fate. Next was the desert and I absolutely hate this place. If you've been following the no start insane mode then you'll know that we are still stuck here. It's gotten so bad in fact that it's tainted the way I play as I often forget that I can use my magic in the desert but after fighting the worst enemy in the game we got onto the UFO boss fights and these bosses are the main reason why I picked beekeeper. Since the UFOs are flying around we can't really melee them without jumping but luckily the beekeeper's magic can consistently hit an is in the air. So after a lot of magic spam, both the UFOs were defeated and we could move into the mothership. And for the aliens, I once again stayed on the move using my dive attack as if I stood still, I would probably get swarmed. But after defeating all the enemies, I had to escape the ship and it was probably one of my smoothest ones yet. Go. Easy. Going down here at the bottom. Right. I'm not going to fail this. Easy, oh, what a run. And after crashing the mothership, I stole some guy's camel and used it to get through the rest of the desert. This led us to our volleyball game and using the uppercut, I was able to win 10-1. Next was the marsh and I think the skeletons were rubbing it in. But at this point, we had leveled up our magic quite a lot, so when it came to dealing with a lot of beefy enemies, we ended up just magic spamming. So we magic spammed all our way to the second troll mother boss fight. Wait. Can we call this a boss fight since there's no health bar? What do you guys think? Is this a boss fight? Let me know in the comments below. But for the second troll mother, I once again just used my dive attack to make sure I was always on the move. So after defeating the troll mother, we went on to our next proper boss fight, the corn boss. The corn boss is just a really annoying fight. It has an insane amount of health and also small damage windows. But for this fight, if you stay near the bottom of the screen, you are able to dive attack, which kind of cheeses out the fight and causes you to do a lot of damage. So by repeating this cheese, I was able to defeat the corn boss, but hey, who doesn't love cheesy corn? Defeating the corn boss gave us the horn, which we can then use to unlock the gate for the next area. Here the level is flooded, making you run extremely slow in the water. So the only real issue with this level was dealing with the slowness. And it really is a shame that there's just no animal orb that can help increase your movement speed in water. So we slowly made our way to the next boss fight, that being Medusa. For the Medusa boss fight, as long as you stay close to her, she can't really do much. One of her snakes will melee you, but this can be blocked. So I simply did damage in between blocking the snake and very quickly, Medusa was defeated. We moved on to Full Moon, which has four beef stole faces. By running to the bottom of the slope, 
the beefy will try and follow you. This causes them to get stuck. And in this state, they are unable to damage you. I repeated this for all the beefies and soon enough, we were onto ladder strat. By using the ladders, I was able to group all of the enemies together, allowing me to damage all the enemies at the same time. Repeat this by going up and down the ladders and soon enough, we made it onto Snow World. Now Snow World is kinda like the desert, I don't like it. It isn't as bad as the desert, it's just an annoying area. The enemies love to throw snowballs, which make a weird squelching sound. There are a lot of these ice barriers which actually have a lot of health. And of course, there are just a lot of enemies. Now it's nowhere near as bad as desert, but it's still not a fun area. But just like the area, the boss isn't too fun either. So the next boss is the Frost King, and he likes to teleport. A lot. <laughs> Leaving us with very small damage windows. And to make things worse, my chat really wanted me to use the ice sword just to make me suffer that little bit more. So for most of the boss fight, I would use my dive attack as this allowed me to get consistent damage in between teleports. I repeated this up until the final phase of the boss fight where his teleports become a lot more frantic. I decided to switch to my splash magic as it gave me a lot more range allowing me to do damage before he teleported. And just like that, the frost king was defeated. We saved the third princess with an uppercut, so that's two out of four princesses princess is saved. Let's check in on Red Princess. Oh hey, that's the final princess. Wait, no, I, I can't jump. W what am I going to do? So the first boss fight in this area is going to be the painter and for the painter we just focused all of our damage when he came down and any paintings he would spawn we just let them hit us. We had quite a lot of defense at this point so them paintings weren't doing too much damage. So I repeated this until the painter came down for his final phase and all I had to do was avoid the paintings whilst doing dive attacks into the painter and after enough dive attacks the painter went down and we could move on to the second boss. For the second boss, we do our damage in between the casket's wings. Then we simply avoid the fireballs, and then of course, pee pee ground shrap. We now repeat this until the cyclops boss finally dies. So the first two bosses were pretty easy, but the same could not be said for the third. That's because we're going to have to defeat the necromancer without jumping. And for the necromancer himself, that's not bad. In fact, it's pretty easy. The real problem is the enemies before. We have to fight two waves of enemies with one of them including three beefies. On my first attempt, I only had one healing potion since this was straight from the other two bosses. So I died at the beginning of the second wave, but I wasn't too worried since I could try it again with full healing potions. So after fighting my way back to the necromancer, I gave it a second go. But on my second go, I didn't even make it to the beefies since the fire demon did this. On my fourth attempt, I changed to the bear club which is one of the best weapons in the game. It gives a plus 5 to strength and a plus 5 to defense, something I desperately needed in this fight. And on my fourth attempt, I actually did it. There's not much I could say on what succeeded in this fight compared to the other three, mainly just having full healing potions and the bear club. There wasn't really a strategy I used, I kinda just spammed melee and magic hoping I won. This meant we could now fight the necromancer himself. And if you're familiar with castle crashes or any other challenge runs I've done, you would know this is extremely easy. The necromancer himself is probably one of the easiest bosses in the game, since all but one attack can be blocked. So after four attempts, the necromancer was defeated and we could move on to the final boss. There are six phases to the final boss fight. The first phase involves destroying these four crystals. I waited for them to land so I could melee them, but if they were in the air, I was actually able to use my magic to damage them as well. For the second phase, the wizard will come down and have two colored bubbles. The blue bubble means you can only damage him with magic and the red bubble is only melee damage. 
So depending on the colour of his bubble, i.e. the damage doing with my magic or my melee. The third phase, the wizard floats in the air as this ball, and since I couldn't jump up to melee him, I simply just used my splash magic so the bees would fall and hit him. For the fourth phase, he's once again flying, just a little bit bigger. But this phase was actually easier since he had a bigger hitbox, meaning my damage was more consistent. The fifth phase is once again the flying ball phase. And finally, the sixth phase we fight the wizard one on one. He will use a sword to summon meteors from the sky and I couldn't really do much as he would jump in the air meaning I couldn't hit him. So I pretty much just ran around the entire arena avoiding the meteors and doing my dash attack whenever I could. It definitely took a while but it was easy consistent damage and eventually the evil wizard was defeated. So, can you beat Castle Crashers without jumping? Surprisingly, yes. I thought this would be impossible, mainly because of the river section. I knew about the Thieves Forest and being able to get past that with melee combos, but I didn't know about the river. We actually figured that out during the stream. But anyway guys, if you have any more challenge runs you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.